You need to think of the relationship between training and recovery as a lesson in good tax practices. Hey, Joe the Bucket List Coach here. Now, you might be able to fiddle your books for a while, but eventually the tax office will catch up with you. And the bigger the deficit, the more trouble you're likely to be in and the longer it will take to come back and recover from it. There is no tax avoidance when it comes to your body and the results of trying to do so can be long-term and catastrophic. Now, I've seen many people, their events derailed, expeditions and trips ruined because they haven't taken this concept on board. Rest and recovery are critical to your training. It's a major part of your training, not a bloody inconvenience. It's the relationship between exercise, stress, and recovery, which is when adaptation happens, that we get what we call the training effect. It's the adaptations that make us stronger, faster, more enduring, not just the exercise itself. It's the exercise you've done, the sleep that you're getting and the food that you're eating that stimulates the system to uh, elevate and reduce hormone levels uh, so that the muscles can repair, rebuild, strengthen and your energy systems improve. Other recovery protocols and activities all just stimulate the same hormones and processes. You know, thinking of uh, soft tissue work, contrast showers, that's extreme hot and extreme cold, ice baths, even sex. Yeah, a bit of uh, hanky-panky is great for recovery. Now, during your training, you get fluid loss, uh, muscle tissue breakdown, which is basically mild inflammation, and the depletion of uh, energy stores, uh, muscle glycogen. Recovery allows the body to replenish energy stores and repair damaged tissues. It's also a time of, uh, for removal of chemicals that build up in the cells as a result of activities during act, uh, exercise, you know, such things like lactate. Without sufficient time to repair and replenish, the body will continue to break down, uh, which is basically more severe inflammation. Uh, and this eventually will get to the point of no return, which is degradation of the, the tissue fibers and eventually injury. The vast majority of training injuries aren't down to one single event, but it's an ongoing process until something eventually gives way. This is why good sleep in particular is such an important part of training recovery. Sleep deprivation can lead to increased levels of cortisol, uh, the stress hormone. Uh, it also leads to decreased activity of human growth hormone, which is important for tissue repair, and decreased glycogen synth synthesis. I like to use a recovery balance sheet. On one side, I've got the credits. Uh, so things like um, sleeping seven to 10 hours is plus 10, uh, 10 points. A stretch class, sauna, ice bath, proper nutrition is plus five points. Um, and foam roller, nap, bit of hanky panky, that's plus three, so, uh, three points. And on the other side, we've got the debits. Excess alcohol, you know, more than two or three glasses, a shit diet, six or less hours of sleep, uh, that's minus five points. A standard run or workout of, uh, of one hour, excess alcohol of more than three glasses, that's minus 10 points. Um, a long workout, two hours plus, um, uh, an intense work, a Metcon, hard track work, hill work, that's minus 20 points. Now, over a week, we add up your credits down one side and your debits down the other. And make sure that by the end of the week, you're in credit, adjusting your credits to cancel out your debits along the way. It's a great and simple system that can really help you keep your eye on your ongoing performance and nip o nipping overuse injuries and inflammation and performance downturns and overtraining in the bud before they even happen. Anyway, give it a go.